Hello, Order Christ. We want to welcome you. It's an exciting day. Today is the first day and the first teaching of our new series that we are calling The New Man. And so as we roll off two amazing series, one on grace and the other one on the body of Christ, we're going to take everything that we learn and everything that was deposited within us and we're moving into this amazing series that we're calling The New Man. And we kind of hinted at this. We dropped a breadcrumb uh, a week or two ago when we were talking in our series. And we said, we made the statement, we made the statement that everything that the Father does is new. And everything that happens in the kingdom of God is new. And here in this series, we're going to completely unpack that and understand that in the deepest way possible so we can understand how we were created to be and what our newness is in Christ. And so with that, we're thrilled to get started with Masood this week. If we're going to learn about the new man, then we have to do that and we have to develop a new way of thinking. And that's what this first teaching is about. Welcome with me, Masood. And don't forget, stay with us at the end. We're going to recap this in a few bullet points and give you some key points to take with you as you go through the week. We love you. God bless you. And we'll see you on the other side. Hello, everyone. And I hope that you are well, strong and healthy and you're ready for the new series, The New Man or The Newness or The Newness of Life. So all of that would be the theme of this new series. And I'm excited to start this new series with you and go through basically what is eventually the essence of the work of Christ, that which actually God uh, wants to accomplish in a sense, he has done it, but now the revelation of that and the manifestation of that through our lives to be seen, to be experienced, and this would become a blessing for the rest of the creation. So we're talking about the newness and uh, basically renewing and all of that. So I'm going to take this first session perhaps to go through some introduction, just as we have done in uh, other series. And then as we move on, we're going to break down the concepts, look at the scriptures more in details and um, even see some wisdom for our life uh, day to day. So uh, newness, what is this newness about? What is this renewing about? I know we have heard a lot about uh, the renewing of the mind and all of that. And we definitely we're going to look at this um, in this series um, in details. But uh, I think sometimes the true power of the Word of God is not experienced in us because we don't get into the meaning of those words. Uh, we believe it, we say we believe it, and because there is no much, not much understanding, when something contrary comes, we don't discern that it is contrary to what we have believed. And we don't resist it, but we accept it. And we think like it's the same thing, but it's not. It's like two different things, two different beliefs, two different words that make our mind to struggle. And then mind, because it has two things to believe, then it becomes double-minded. And a double-minded man, according to James chapter 1, uh, basically, or chapter 3, is unstable in all things. Why? Because this mind is constantly going to this way, to the left, and to the, sorry, to the right, and to the left. And this is what Ephesians chapter 4 calls being tossed to and fro, like a boat that actually is under the influence of the wind, that it, it doesn't have, uh, this boat doesn't have its own will and power, but it's under the influence of the will and power of this wind. So wherever the wind blows, the boat will go. If it goes to the left, it goes. If it goes to the right, it goes. And I've seen this uh, basically often in the people of God that they somehow, uh, they allow other things other than the truth revealed in Jesus uh, through the Spirit to become, to be driving them, to be moving them also. So they look at basically things that happen in life and they say that was a sign from God. And because of this, uh, something that wasn't really God uh, speaks to them and they accept it. And when you accept it, you believe it. And when you believe it, you live by it. 
So somehow, once again, you subject yourself to signs in the natural and you kind of forget the sign that God has given us. I mean, you can see this through Jesus himself speaking about this sign. Paul spoke about this sign. Uh, let me first say what Jesus said. Jesus said no sign will be given um, except the sign of the prophet Jonah. What did Paul say? Christ crucified is that sign. So what does that mean? There is only one truth God has given to us, a sign that is pointing us to the truth. And that's the story of the three days and three nights. And that is literally the story of death and resurrection, which implies our baptism into Christ, into his death and into his resurrection. And what does that say? God's truth toward us is that he says, I want you to know that you are dead to the old and you're no longer the same that was, but you are now the new. Now, everything in the New Testament is trying to get us to, uh, to believe it, to believe this newness, to live by it and to experience it. You, you read the letters of Paul and I mean, he's, he seems like he's repeating himself over and over, but he's not. He's trying to basically uh, bring this point home saying that, you know, uh, don't you know that when you were baptized, you were baptized uh, basically in Christ's death? Okay, so he's trying to first deal with the old. And then he says, but then if we shared in the likeness of his death, certainly we are now sharing with him in the newness of his life. So then this new newness comes. So the old is nothing except that which is about the old. He's trying to say, you know, get the cross, the, the principle of cross, and let that be a point for you to believe that as far as God is concerned, you are not the one you used to be according to your perception. And resurrection says, as far as God is concerned, you are raised with Christ. Okay, This is that which according to the uh, book of Isaiah was called a new thing that God would do. Okay, Now we're going to look at... Uh, these scriptures but what I'm trying to say is there has to be a change in our way of thinking we have to have a new way of thinking or else everything that we read everything that we talk about everything that we go to church to listen to or we have in fellowship with one another they don't they don't have they don't produce in us that which they want to okay some, somehow, just as Paul says, uh, this Christ um, is of no value to us anymore. Okay? We, we are not actually having, um, we are void of the effect of the power of the Christ that lives inside of us. Now, let's quickly go to uh, basically the book of Isaiah. Look at Isaiah chapter I think 43 should be. Okay, I was actually looking at the book of Psalm. That's why I was not able to find it. So look at Isaiah chapter 43. Yes. Um, look at verse 18. This is God speaking. And he says, Do not remember the former things, nor consider... Then the things of the old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Okay, so let me just put this on the screen. So this is Isaiah. What does he say? Verse 18, do not remember. Former things. And then, nor consider the things of the old. So, do not consider uh, the things of the old. So, I'm going to have the things of 
the old. And then he says, behold, I will do. So behold, I will do a new thing. Okay, so you see here that it's all about former things and the things of the old once again that you should not remember and then there is something called the new thing and it says this is basically God says I will do this so what is this thing about what is this uh, the old and what is the new what is this thing that God says do not remember okay and see this do not remember and do not consider what does it have to do how do you remember and how do you not remember so what do these two speak of this is about your mind okay that's how you remember something you don't remember something with your hand you don't remember something with your um, eyes you don't remember something with your fingers you remember things with your mind okay and it says everything that you're struggling with about the former things and the old things they are were in the mind now uh, it says I will do a new thing so let's quickly look at what this new thing is in the same book uh, well actually before going and showing you that uh, let me look at the beginning of chapter 43 of Isaiah so you can see something Isaiah 43 says but now thus says the Lord who created you okay so remember this was verse 18 what I just actually showed you here so all that was Isaiah 43 verse 18 and 19 so this was verse 18 to 19 now we are moving to verse uh, 1 and perhaps some other verses so let's start from verse 1 it says behold but now thus says the Lord who created you so what do we see here immediately the one who created you all right it's getting interesting let's move on O Jacob and he who formed you O Israel so he created you he formed you then he says fear not okay this is the message now it says this is let me tell you I created you and I formed you now my message to you is fear not for I have redeemed you wow okay so the, the one who created you it says now I have redeemed you doesn't this sound like a change from here to here don't we have a change isn't it that he created you and then he redeemed you why there was whenever we say um, that something was redeemed or someone was redeemed this comes of course from the concept of slavery in the old the way they were redeemed or from or let me say they were redeemed when they were not free or in other words whenever someone was sold for slavery in order for them to be free they had to be redeemed okay so something apparently had happened between creation basically after creation so here we were sold 
So you were created by God, but then you were sold by someone to something, and we're going to discover what that is. And that was the time that God said, I who created you, I'm responsible for you to also redeem you. So something happens. We are moving from the old to the new. So uh, therefore, look at these words once again. He created you and he redeemed you. So the story of Jesus, what is the story of Jesus about? Let me just move this a bit up. Okay, so let's choose another color. So what is the story of Jesus? Well, you know, this Jesus means literally salvation. He is the Savior. So he's the one who actually um, or let me say in more, a, a more clear word that we know the Creator as Yahweh and the Redeemer as Yeshua. All right. So the work that was done in the old, which was your Creator, you didn't have any knowledge of who God is, you just knew everybody, some, in some way, everybody believes that they were created. I know about other belief systems, but looking at religion, um, people believe that they were created and there is a creator. But the problem is they don't know who he is. So when Jesus shows up on the scene, he comes and actually sets us free from that unknown uh, God, or better to say, he helps us to actually know the one who created us. That's when you experience redemption. Why? Because you were sold to, <clears throat> to a false perception about God. I mean, there are many things that we can say and we're going to see, but I want us to first establish this, that um, you and I have a beginning. Okay, uh, we and our beginning is God. Doesn't matter what we believe, doesn't matter what religion we are from, doesn't matter uh, who or what we think we are. Uh, there is only one person that created us. Okay, the creator is one. But the knowledge of that creator is not accurate among people. So that creator then becomes incarnated in the flesh. And then he shows the nature of who he has been even when he was a creator and we didn't know him. So Jesus becomes uh, basically the manifestation in the flesh of who he was in the spirit or who he has been always in the spirit or he is in the spirit. So the spirit, God, Jesus said God is a spirit. For God to actually show us who he is, to a carnal people that everything that they could understand or perceive was the things that were fleshly, natural around us, something that we can touch, see, and handle. In order for God to actually make us know who He is, He had to make Himself like us. He had to become one like us. He had to be needing to eat, to drink, to, I don't know, to go to bathroom, to you know, uh, be subject to the same weaknesses that we are. So in his fellowship with us, uh, but by showing the goodness, the grace, the mercy, the love that he has been always having, help us to see, to be attracted to him. And through that, he could step by step take us to the deeper, deeper level of understanding and knowing him. And when we, we begin to know him, we are fully free. Why? Because when you see him fully, you understand him, you know him, you suddenly begin to know yourself. Why? Because, because your false perception of him is gone. So you begin to hear the true God. You begin to experience his uh, knowledge of you and you begin to see yourself and you will never, as you are, and you will never again allow anything else or anyone else to tell you who you are. 
Okay, that's why I said people, I mean, we have to stop looking by signs. We don't need, I mean, that's the way of the old. Uh, my mom still lives that way and she, because she doesn't know Jesus. And everything that happens, she says, well, it is God's will. Someone passes away. I don't know what God, why God did this. Or, you know, um, somebody goes bankrupt. Uh, God knows better. Or, and people, when, when you are in that situation, you don't resist. You don't, um, you know, you, you, don't, um, you don't try to change things. You just leave it as it is. You just subject yourself to it. There is no fighting. There is no, you know, um, seeking. There is no knocking. There is no asking. Why? Because you just gave up. All right. So uh, I hope actually I showed you these things. But anyways, going back to uh, this story, God says, I created you, O Jacob, and I redeemed you, O Israel. So you already see there is another ch change here from Jacob to Israel. So what is God changing here? The name. Okay, It's not just simply a name. It's actually a name is an identity. God gave Jacob the old a new identity in Israel. Now, what was what does Israel mean? God's prince. Or who was Jacob, the deceiver, or even the deceived also? So that's God. That's what God actually is doing. A new thing. What is that new thing? Let me actually, because uh, as I said, this is a foundation. I'm going to show you things that were in the old and connect them to the new. So we have a. A uh, broader view of, uh, not broader, broader view of basically God's plan and details would come after that. Now, so we're talking about do not remember the former things, do not consider the things of the old. Behold, I will do a new things. And then he says, uh, who created you, O Jacob, uh, and who redeemed you, O Israel, and then he goes on to say in verse 43 at the end, I have called you by your name, the new name. You are mine. See, God is declaring his possession of humans, his right to be the owner. And people think like, you know, God is going to give up on people. No, and he will never do that. I mean, he's saying, if I created you, I will redeem you. So don't fear. Isn't that, I mean, the simpler language of what I just read for you, fear not, I have redeemed you. So for all of you who are in a state of fear toward your loved ones, I want to give you rest and peace. Fear not, because you are not the one who created your children. You are not the one who created your family members. You are not the one who created your friends. God did that. And he has said, I will redeem. So it's not for you to be in st and your stress, your fear, your anxiety, you know, constant prayer and all of that. Those are not the things that would actually make this to happen. Of course, you can pray. Of course, you can uh, help them. But in peace, in joy, there has to be a gospel. There has to be a good news. So don't burden yourself with that. God says, I have created and I will redeem. So God says, I can make the slaves to be free. That's the message of the Christ. He is the son who sets us free. And the son, the only way that the son can set us free is by his revelation of the true nature of the father. And then his manifestation of a true son of this father okay so anyways um, uh, it's just amazing maybe we should actually continue in Isaiah 43 so it says do not fear and all of that verse 2 when you pass through the waters I will be with you and through the rivers they shall not overflow you when you walk through the fire 
you shall not be burned, nor shall the flame scorch you, for I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. Okay, so do you see that God is giving us assurance that he says no fire, no water, and no river, when you pass through them, would be able to hold you. Okay, so anything that is going on, and by the way, these are the elements that will make the old to become new. Uh, you know, fire is for purifying, wa water is for uh, cleansing, and you see that language in the New Testament often about uh, how the flood of Noah was a cleansing, was foreshadowing the cleansing of our conscience. So just like Noah entered a new world by the flood that washed the old, so likewise you can enter into the new creation, the new world, which you are, by a cleansing that happens in your conscience by the water. So God says, don't worry about this, don't fear. There is going to be water and there is going to be fire. And that is for your cleansing and for your purifying. But from what? From that which was uh, becoming a spot in your conscience. That which, uh, I, I will wash it away. That which was becoming an impurity in the gold who you are. You're divine and uh, that carnal parts the carnal understandings have in some sort become the um, the impurities that the fire needs to remove that and what is the fire god himself is a consuming fire so he says there is going to be a fire and there is going to be a water now this uh, jesus appeared on the scene as our savior who would actually redeem us so our created value once again could be seen he used the terms like water and fire okay we know that um like paul says there is a renewing by renewing basically a regeneration by the washing of the word in this is i think in titus 3 verse 5 if i'm not mistaken and John the Baptist says, he who comes after me will baptize you with fire. So what are all these things? Well, all those foreshadowings that were in the old, they were only pointing at the true to come. So there was a water, there was a fire, but now there is the true water and the true fire, the spiritual water and the spiritual fire, and they will spiritually cleanse you. Not anymore the cleansing of the filth of the flesh, but actually the purifying of our conscience. What is the conscience? Back to the beginning, the story of the mind, your awareness. So you're, you were aware of the old, now God is making you to be aware of the new. All right, so uh, let's quickly look at Isaiah chapter uh, 65 as well, because we said you're talking about the former things and the new things. And God said, I will do a new thing. What is that? Isaiah chapter 65, verse 17. For behold, I create, this is the new thing that he says, new heavens and a new earth. So what is God doing? He is creating a new heaven and a new earth. And once again, and the former shall not be remembered or come to mind. So, this new heaven and new earth form the new creation. God is creating a new creation. So what is that speaking of? God says, I will make you to become the new heaven and the new earth. Now, I gave you that um, basically view. So keep this. And in this series, we're going to uh, dive deep into uh, some of these elements of what it means to actually have the old heaven be gone. Uh, the new heaven to come, what is the old earth, what is the new earth, all that symbology. But let me actually end this by what Paul uh, sees in the same scriptures that I read for you and writes to us in his epistle to the church in Corinth. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 5 
verse uh, 17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Full stop. So what was the new thing that God said, I will do? I will do a new thing. I will create new heavens and new earth. And it says now, God has done this in Christ. Not out there. Not that he will do this in the future in some magical realms called, you know, heavens and heavens of heavens. No, this is about us. He says, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. Now, he doesn't stop there. He goes on actually to say, the old things have passed away. <laughs> That's amazing. I mean, Isaiah 43, Isaiah uh, 65, he says, and do not remember the former things. Do not consider the things of the old. But what was the things of the old and what was the things, uh, former things? Your perception of who you were. says that was in Adam, but in Christ, you are a new creation. So we have two worlds, two creation with two men. We have Adam's world and Christ's world. We have Adam as the first man we have or the old man and we have Christ as the new man and the process between the transformation from going one to the other is becoming dead to the one and becoming being made alive to the next one this is actually what I'm going to be looking at in the next uh, week's um, teaching to look at these concepts now in the context of the book of Romans and get acquainted with this newness like never, never before. All right, so bless you and I will see you in the next week's video. Welcome back, Word of Christ. And we told you this is gonna be an awesome teaching and a beginning of an amazing series on the new man. So we're excited to get started. We have a few bullet points. We're gonna keep this concise, nice and tight for you. Uh, as we open up in this new series. And the first point that we want to leave you with as you move through the week is this, is that believers will often look for signs in their circumstances as proof of new life when the one and only sign we should be looking to is Jesus. And so this is really important and it's an easy trap to fall into, right? This is what we start to do. Uh, we start to look and we said, wow, this good thing happened to me, so it must be God. Or this bad thing happened to me, um, so the Bible can't be true, or God isn't real, or God is punishing me, or whatever excuse that we come up, because we're trying to connect what happened in our circumstance um, to what happened, um, to what the truth is that we thought we believed. And many times we want to believe something, but that belief hasn't really been rooted in our hearts uh, to really come and make a difference. And so it's important that we stand firm. This is what we read in Ephesians 4, uh, chapter 4, verse 14 and 15. It says that we should no longer be children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of men and the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting, but speaking the truth in love may grow up in all things into him who is the head and is Christ. And so we touched a lot about that when we were in the body of Christ, but it is 100% relevant here uh, as we look to say, look, that we've got to be firm in our truth. And the only sign that we should look at is that we grow up in all things into him who is the head, which is Christ. We should look only to Jesus, the finished and complete work of the cross and his resurrection as the indicator the sign and the proof of new life. And so when we look at our circumstances, note what the scripture says, we are without power. That's what it means by saying we are tossed to and fro, carried about by every wind. That is life without power within or without power of its own. It means you don't have power to set your own direction or the power of God's not inside of you. So you get tossed to and fro by what you see, by what you hear, and, and don't remain committed to the truth of Jesus. And the scripture is clear. It says, look to Jesus, the author and the finisher of your faith. That is the only sign we need. That's the indicator. And that's where our faith is rooted and grounded in. 
The second point is this, is that our struggle with our old self is rooted in our mind. And so this is so powerful. We saw this in Isaiah 43, verse 18. It says, do not remember the former things, nor consider the things of old. And so it says, don't remember and don't consider the things of old. And here's the thing to note, remembering and considering are functions of our mind. Remembering and considering happens in our mind. It's where we hold our thoughts and it's in our mind that we hold on to our former selves. And the scripture is clear. It says, put those things aside. Don't consider the things of old. And our tendency in our humanity, without us really latching on to the truth of, of who the Father is, our tendency in our humanity is always going to be to default to our faults, right? This is what we say when we say we're our greatest critics. It means that we hang on to our mistakes. We hang on to our regrets. And it's hard to move beyond that because they're rooted in our mind. And it says, don't consider the things of old. Do not remember the past, but move forward in truth. The third point is this, is that Jesus comes to redeem us to the one who created us. And so this is powerful. So the name of Jesus actually means Savior or Redeemer. And this is what it says is a Christmas verse, but in Matthew chapter 1, verse 21, I want to show you a couple of verses here. It says, And she will bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. That's what his name means. It's to save. He saves us from our sins. But it's important that we remember how the scripture defines sin. Sin is not breaking a moral code. Sin is not misbehaving. Sin literally means to miss the mark. It means the thing that you were shooting for, that you should be shooting for, you miss. And where do we miss the mark? It happens in our minds. It's where we had the wrong understanding of God the Father. So Jesus comes to redeem us from our sin, from our wrong understanding of who God is and the one who created us. And here's the thing, when we are redeemed, we begin to see God the Father as he truly is. And when we see Jesus and we see the Father, we start to see ourselves and that's where our redemption comes from. John 8, 32 a famous verse, it says, you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. And this ties back to, to, what our first, to what our first post is. It's the truth of Jesus that becomes our sign and not our circumstances. It's the one sign, it's the one truth that we need to look and point to and come to know that truth. And it's that truth that makes us free. And then our fourth and final point is this, is that all things are made new in Christ. This is the principle of this series, is that Christ comes to make everything new. We read this in Isaiah 43, 19. It says, Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. And it, it asks this question, Shall you not see it? And here's the thing. The fact that he asks, Will you know this? Will you see it? And, and just the fact that that question is asked tells us that it indicates to us that we can actually totally miss it. We can miss the thing that is new if we stay with our old self in our minds. And in 2 Corinthians 5.17, it says, Therefore, if, any was in, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. There is so much in this one verse for us to unpack, for us to talk about. What does it mean when it says all things have become new? It means everything by which we define life is completely redefined. And so I say this all the time. God is not in the fixer-upper business. He's not here to take how we define life and make that better. It's not about making our our, our, our self more successful about life the way we know it. That's not at all what the gospel is, and that's not at all what Jesus came to do. He says he makes all things, all things have become new. That means our very definition of how we carry out our life and who we are 
is completely redefined into something completely new. And that's what this series is about. It's about unpacking that, about understanding it, about really opening that up and so we can see ourselves as we ought to see ourselves. And so we're excited about this. Thank you for joining us in this new series. We look forward to move forward. Uh, we know that there's so much great truth ahead that will minister to us, that will free us, and that will put our minds on the things that are new. God bless you, family. We love you. We'll see you next week with our second teaching.